This is Copenhagen, Denmark. And by some measures, it is home to the happiest people in the world. It is a port city with beautiful harbor views, and it is known to have some of the best bicycle infrastructure in the world. Today, I'm going to take you on a tour of Copenhagen, Denmark by walking, cycling, and public transit. And as a bonus, I'm even going to take you on their sea ferry bus thing. And then we're going to give Copenhagen a human mobility score. There are three different types of trains that connect Copenhagen with the region. One is the metro system, which is a very local transport. The second type of the S train, which is more of a suburban rail. And the third is an intercity train, which connects Copenhagen with the rest of the cities in Denmark. These red S trains are regional trains. They don't drive themselves like the metros do, but you can take your bicycle on them for free. And they come quite frequently. Those are the bike carriages on which you can fold up the seats and take your bikes for free. You can fit quite a few on these bike carriages. We won't hop on this train, but instead, let's go check out the ferry bus. The ferry bus seems like a very fun way to get around the city. In addition to going from A to B, you can also get some sightseeing done and get a view of all the nice bridges that crisscross the city. These ferry buses are fully electric and has room for two wheelchairs and four bicycles. The ferry is electric. It is completely silent. So we're getting a nice ride along the harbor. I really enjoyed the amount of detail that's paid to the paving of this pedestrian area in the city center of Copenhagen. The ground level really matches up with all the beautiful architecture that's in the background, making this such a great walking experience. This is like infinite pedestrian crossings where the stripes extend all the way down the street. It's an interesting and very intuitive way to show pedestrian priority space. This also feels like a very roomy city. There's a generous amount of squares for people to gather and lots of space for pedestrians to walk around, but it doesn't feel too open and exposed. This video is brought to you by the EIT Urban Mobility Academy. And if you love learning about urban mobility, check out their new courses completely free at urbanmobilitycourses.eu. Link in the description below. The pedestrianized areas of Copenhagen is very nice, but this is what you see when you leave the main train station. It's about six lanes of traffic and this mess of a taxi stand. These buses load and unload directly onto the bike lane, which could create a hazardous situation if you don't pay attention. Drivers are fairly careful here, but these bike lanes that turn into these turn lanes aren't very comfortable to ride on. I'm at the back of the train station where these bikes just seem to be parked pretty haphazardly on the overpass. If I was parked in here, I don't know how I would get my bike out. I do find it really cool that there are cargo bikes everywhere in the city. Big, small, ones with dogs in them, ones with kids with them, ones with large mattresses in them. Behind me is a famous snake bridge in Copenhagen, and it is a bridge built exclusively for cyclists. Starting from this bridge, I'm going to give you a tour of the various bridges that connect the city. The snake bridge behind me is actually fed by another bridge which crosses the main waterway, and that is the one that actually feeds people here. As the pedestrians come off this bridge, they then proceed to take the stairs back there while the bikes go up the ramp onto the snake bridge. The other side of this bridge is actually pretty bumpy for cyclists if you see this paving material, but if you stay along these two tracks, then you can get a smooth ride. This is the Inner Harbors Bridge. It's a bicycle pedestrian bridge that looks really cool from far away, but once you ride on it, you're wondering, why are these zigzags everywhere? It's not what bikes really do. 
We are now on the Long Bridge, and it appears that all you get is a painted bike lane, and it's super loud on this bridge. Next to the Long Bridge is the Little Long Bridge, which is a bridge built specifically for pedestrians and cyclists. This bridge moves out of the way to make way for ships, so that's why you got the barriers that come down. It is a very straightforward design. Pedestrians on one side, bikes on the other, and it just takes you straight across. No zigzag or any nonsense. This is one of the more interesting pedestrian-centric bridges. It's built in these circle pods, so there's places to wait and hang around and enjoy the view. This behind me is not an airplane runway, but it is a bicycle lane that goes across this bridge and it is the widest piece of bicycle infrastructure I've ever seen. This has to be at least four meters per lane, which is eight meters for the entire bike lane, plus a very generous sidewalk on the side. However, the problem here is that it leads to the bicycle snake bridge, which is much narrower. So you got all this wide space and all the cyclists coming in, but then it gets funneled through a very narrow bridge, which causes quite a bit of congestion during rush hours. The question for you though is, would you like biking down an airplane runway? Way. That's what it feels like, and it doesn't feel all that good, actually. Some trees, for example, would make the space nice, and some benches for the pedestrians who could then sit around and have a view. And this takes us to the end of this tour of Copenhagen, Denmark, and it is now time to give the city a human mobility score. For transit, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. The sea ferry bus thing is really cool and amazing, and I do love the self-driving metro system, which is brand new and super clean. My one big gripe is with the sidewalk loading bus network, which creates some big conflicts with the cycling network. Perhaps a dedicated bus route for transit or a tram network that runs along the center of the street will reduce these conflicts and create greater capacity on these wide roads that they already have in the city. And for cycling, you're going to have to bash me in the comments below, but I will have to give this city a 4 out of 5. The cycling infrastructure is certainly the widest I've ever seen, but it is not the best. There's a lot of cyclists on the road, but the experience of cycling overall is a bit lacking. For example, we could do with more trees and better infrastructure treatments that give more clarity for where cyclists need to go. Personally, I also have a preference for the relaxed Dutch cycling culture where it's a bit of a chaos, but everything works out the end. Here, people follow the rules very strictly, which, I don't know, takes away from the fun of things, doesn't it? But the one big pain point that prevents the city from getting a 5 out of 5, in my mind, is a lack of bicycle parking. Normally, in a Dutch city, you would see a giant bicycle parking garage next to the train station, but there's none of that there. It's kind of like chaos and littered about. And the biking park racks, when you do find them, are really not well designed, and you can't fit that many bicycles in there, and your handlebars ends up clashing and so forth. For walking, I've only really walked in the city center area, but the architecture here is quite beautiful and there's amazing harbor front views. For that, I will give walking a 4 out of 5. For bike share, there's not that many options here. As far as I can tell, there's donkey bike and then there's the electric line bikes. But the donkey bike I've been using has a really large fleet and is very easy to access with bikes everywhere. As a tourist, I would like to see some electric scooter options, but without those, I think the bike share system works fine, but it's not excellent. I will have to give the bike share a 4 out of 5. That gives Copenhagen, Denmark a human mobility score of 16 out of 20. And if you're a cyclist in Copenhagen, do leave your thoughts in the comments below and let me know why I am wrong. I hope to see you at the next city.